Before we begin, thank you very much to Capricious Collector for joining the Patreon campaign. Thank you very much for the support. Thank you for pitching in and helping to keep the channel going and the daily content coming. The grind never stops around here as long as you guys are supporting me, and I thank you very much for it. Speaking of never stopping, you know what else has never stopped? The freaking news cycle this week. I've never seen so many leaks before. It's not enough to find out 2025 Studio Series lineup. It's not enough to find out the new Amazon capsule line. It's not enough to find out all the stuff in the last waves of Legacy United. No, 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 no. We also need to find out the 2025 Generations line. I have never seen so many leaks at one time. It's absolutely insane. You know, there's there's leaks that trickle out. There is the faucet breaking, and then there's the dam bursting. We are at dam bursting levels at this point. Well, it's made my week easy. We get to talk and speculate about all the new stuff that just got uh, unintentionally announced. So, for starters, let's get this part out of the way, and we'll tackle this toward the end of the video. The new line is called Transformers Generations Prime. That's not going to be confusing to Google at all between Optimus Prime and Transformers Prime. I don't know why they felt like they need to keep that in cycle as a term, because I feel like Optimus Prime handles that just fine. But for whatever reason, we have... Uh, we have a lot of new toys to talk about, but a few older ones that are going to get a new coat of paint, sometimes literally. So as always with these, we're going to start with a packaging refresh, and we've only got one that's going to leak its way into Generations Prime, and that's Crasher. I love that they actually did a full Crasher homage that actually got to be named Crasher, and now it's going to see a mass retail release. That's insane to me. A GoBot is going to see mass retail release under the Transformers banner. And not just a simple homage, but the right name. And as close of an appearance as they could get. Now, I still argue, because they own the intellectual property, they absolutely could use the, the Hanna-Barbera face. They absolutely could use the animation face on the head sculpt. So one of these days, I'm hoping they go that far and we get like something that is proper Crasher. But for now, I think uh, I think retools of Mirage, I think that works. I think it works. So really cool to see this at mass retail. Um, if you're one of those who was buying up stock at Ross and hoping to sell it off uh, at some kind of major profit, uh, now's the time to get rid of that Crasher. Because that Crasher is now going to be uh, a lot more common next year. So you got about a year, though. You got about a year, about 10 months or so before uh, before that happens. So you got time. You got time. What else is coming down the pipe? So a Generation 2 Grimlock is listed. It's probably not going to be the Tiger Stripe one. Because uh, this one is not marked a packaging refresh. It just says G2, which does lead me to believe it's the 86 mold redone in the G2 blue colors. That would be a pretty obvious reuse, pretty obvious thing to do. Um, nothing terribly surprising here. It looks like it's just going to be the standard leader figure with with uh, blue parts instead of gray. That's really the only thing that was different with the G2 release. Unless you were one of the lucky kids who got a teal version instead, because that's the rarer repaint. But it is what it is. Uh, I have some nostalgia for the blue Grimlock, so I think it'd be cool to see. I'm expecting no wheelie with that one, by the way. That's where I would expect a Grimlock sword. Um, still hoping that Swoop includes all the swords, just so people will shut up about the swords. Alright, and there's one more that's going to be a retool. At least we assume it's going to be a retool because it's a pretty obvious one to do. Wasp is finally getting a toy. So the new Bumblebee that everyone goes nuts over, and I'm personally not terribly fond of. <laughs> Let me be the rogue on that one. Um, this one is pretty obvious. Wasp never got a toy. Obviously, it's one of the, the canceled figures from Transformer Animated's, you know, what would potentially have been the final wave. Um... And famously, there was one where 
they had a little bit of budget for a new head sculpt and it was either going to go to Ironhide or is going to go to Wasp and they voted for Ironhide. So Wasp was just going to be a Bumblebee repaint. Here, expect a full retool. The proper head sculpt should look pretty good. Should look pretty good. Justice for Wasp, finally, finally getting a figure. There's one name in here that raises a little bit of suspicion. We're going to get into stuff that seems to all be brand new toys because uh, there's no package refresh or obvious repaints that it could be from. And one of the names in there, oddly enough, is Swindle. Now, don't get me wrong. Swindle is a popular character. It's Derek Wyatt's favorite and all that. But what makes it weird is that there's no other Combaticons listed which, you know, kind of goes against the whole format they've been doing, you know, with like, like Menasaur, just, you know, get them all out within the same year. We should have at least one of the other Combaticons mentioned, but no, it's just a solo Swindle release, which actually got me thinking. What if it's not the G1 Swindle? What if it's another Swindle? What if this is in fact animated Swindle? Because let's be honest, what what character out of animated needs it more? Number one, Derek's favorite child. And number two, that toy was really good, except for the clear plastic that absolutely wrecked it. And that's not even me being paranoid over clear plastic. No, legitimately, the translucent plastic on that thing wrecked most every joint in it and made that toy unplayable, which is unfortunate because it's a cool toy. So a modern redo? absolutely i would love to see this toy done again and it's the only reason i can think of now maybe i could be completely off here and they are doing the combaticons but it's a much slower burn than they did with menasaur maybe maybe but i can't think of any reason why you wouldn't do you, you know a swindle would be announced on his own because there is no other like prominent solo swindle outside of like earth spark and I can't imagine he would get a Generations toy before he gets a proper Earth Spark toy. So at the moment, I'm presuming it's animated. Uh, we will know more in the coming months, hopefully. Uh, another one that came up, and this one solves a problem we just talked about in a previous video. Yesterday's video, as a matter of fact. Venom is getting a release as a deluxe class Transformer. Now... We kind of went over this yesterday talking about the Mayhem capsule figures because we're getting Chop Shop uh, and uh, Barrage as a two-pack. And those are obvious retools of the existing Insecticon molds, but Venom doesn't have anyone. There, you know, There's no one who matches his bug mode. So what are you to do? Um, apparently, they're just going to make a brand new one, and he's going to be the mass retail release. That seems like a weird shout, but you know what? I will take it. I will accept it. I don't know what else you do with the toy. I also don't know if Marvel's going to like you naming him Venom, but you have the license to Marvel, so I guess you can technically get away with it. But either way, um, I like the design on Venom, so it's actually I'm actually kind of happy that he's getting an easy-to-obtain release. Though it does make it weird to collect all four deluxe Insecticons now. Well, at least it's not another weird multi-pack. Let's put let's be grateful for that. And then speculate, what on earth are they gonna retool it into? Because you know they don't approve molds these days unless they can get at least two more uses out of it. Who knows? Uh it's, it's gonna be a weird one, but we we will see. Branching out away from the generation one lot. Well, I guess we're focusing more animated than anything, really. Uh, we are dipping again into Armada because there is a Voyager Red Alert listed. I thought this was coming when JP25 or whatever, whatever that Jura first Jurassic Park figure was. I thought that was going to be like the Red Alert because he kind of feels Red Alert. But no, we're getting a proper Voyager one. Obviously going to be a little bit more screen accurate than what I imagined for my previous expectation. And you know what? Cool. Very cool. He's got a Powerlinks repaint. He's got some other weird repaints over the years. So, yeah, there's got to be plenty of uses in there. And it's just kind of like a standard Transformer style body. So, I would not, I can imagine they've got a lot planned for that mold. Cannonball. Do a retail level cannonball. 
Uh, this is cool to see that the Armada run is continuing, and you're at least going to have the core three Autobots that started the the uh, the the fact the, the 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 cartoon off. That does mean we are lacking a Demolisher and a Cyclonus, and I would love a new Demolisher. I would love a new Demolisher, Hasbro. Um, can we? Can we please? Can we please? It's kind of disturbing that, you know, we haven't seen anything else as far as, like, Armada in this list. So, kind of weird that we're only getting one. But, you know, I'll take one. That's all I'm getting for now. Here's a name I'm super excited to see in the listings again. We have a Skybite. Again, listed as a Voyager. This one is a real surprise. Um, I thought just I thought they just be happy doing the Generations one, and that was it. But no, this is listed as a proper Voyager class R.I.D. Skybite. So not even the Cyberverse version with the the more uh, uh, sleeked down design. No, apparently we're getting something a little bit more screen accurate. So expect big shoulder shells as is proper for this design. Um, I'm hoping for a large and very solid take on the original Skybite design. I'd be amazed if Hasbro actually gives it the lavish paint that the original got. That's going to be the real challenge to a modern Skybite toy. But we'll see what it is. I, I'm just happy he's getting some attention. You know, I'm, ha I'm happy that he's getting a new figure. So, you know, I guess, uh, I, I, I guess it's kind of like just ramps up. Like maybe we're, maybe like we're like, because we're getting a little bit more Armada and we're getting a little bit more R.I.D. Uh, it feels like they're kind of done with Beast Wars because I'll give you a spoiler alert. There's no Beast Wars characters in this list. Uh, we No sign of Quick Strike or any trans metals. So who knows? Like I'm completely lost on that one. So maybe they're just kind of shifting into R.I.D. You know, just in time for... Uh, Omega Prime to drop. That said, we have a couple more odd ones. For starters, Heat Wave. There is a Voyager class Heat Wave listed. Please don't just be a retool of Inferno. I could so easily see them going that route, but it really should just it should be more proper. It should be more proper Heat Wave. You know, similar to Chase, it should be a brand new mold. You know, that just seems like an updated, more, you know, grown-up design, as it were. Um, yeah, Inferno is a retool probably would not be appropriate. He's just too chesty. It's too wide-shouldered. Like, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. I could see Hasbro back in the day doing that. Not Hasbro now. Um, most likely, serving it as something of a pre-tool for something else. I could absolutely see a brand new heat wave coming out that is like a pre-tool for an eventual like Sentinel Prime. You know, if you tool it right, you know, uh, it'd be tricky, but I think it wouldn't be, you know, undoable. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, it, there's definite potential there. Definite potential there. It's just cool that the Rescue Bots cast is, start, is still getting a little bit of love here. Um... If they keep this up and just start dripping in a rescue bot every series, then, you know, give it a few years and you'll at least be able to make the main cast of the first show. Because it means I'm probably in for like a seven year wait before I get Girl Whirl. No, oh, well, waited longer. Here's one. This one is coming out of nowhere. There's a listing for a Voyager class flatline. Flatline is a former Decepticon and later neutral medic character from IDW. Uh, and really, that's it. It's a character created specifically for IDW. Now, there are a couple other iterations of a character named Flatline in Transformers, but none with any level of prominence, importance, or anything that would uh, signify they're getting a toy. Um, if I'm willing to bet... I'm willing to bet this ends up being a retool of someone. I can't imagine like a, I can't, I can't imagine just some random character who never appeared in a cartoon uh, and really wasn't even that big of a player in the comic books would get a completely original mold might be a planned retool for the red alert figure. If I'm just like wildly guessing here, uh, but I, I, it's a weird choice. It's a really weird choice, especially at mass retail. Genuinely curious what exactly this one's going to be. Uh, so we're going to start hitting the big stuff now, because there's some really big drops in here. Uh, and the first one is 
four of the five aerial bots. The last time we found out all of these combiners all at the same time, we got an entire Menasaur in a single year's time. I'm going to point out that, like the Studio Series listings, there is no Commander class listed. So if they actually are doing a new Superion in the same style as Legacy Menasaur, then that would kind of explain why. Because Silverbolt is going to be packed into the big box with all the extra things you need to turn it into Superion. I don't know how they're going to work that out. You know, he's not like uh, he's not like Motormaster where he just happens to come with a big box where all of Menasaur's com you know, combination skeleton lies. You know, it's you know it's Menas you know it's it's Silverbolt. You know, there's no excess, there's not a lot of excess junk to him to do that with. He'd have to come with like an entire like I don't know what what an entire tarmac, an entire takeoff ramp or something that folds up into Superion. I don't know. I'm genuinely curious how they intend to pull this one off because it's so it's an odd choice. Like obvious choice, but it feels odd. Genuinely curious how they're actually going to work it. Okay. So we can speculate on that all we want. Um that's not the reason why it's called Generations Prime. The reason we're calling this Generations Prime is as you probably saw from the first image I used it is a series that includes the Primes. This is already an interesting concept because throughout Transformers, since we started incorporating the 13 into fiction, there's never really been a consistent cast nor a consistent usage of them. So the 13 Primes are usually kept in shadow. They are vague designs that aren't fully seen or they are just silhouetted. So you don't exactly know who all the members are in any given universe. Some universes switch members around. In the movies, they only have seven of them. And good luck telling them apart because they're all the same shrapnel man. So we're kind of left to wonder exactly what kind of depiction all of them are going to get considering like usually when the 13 appear it's one or two that takes center stage right now it's quintus prime in earth spark in idw 1.0 it was onyx prime in 2015 rid it's micronus and megatronus and everyone else is just kind of spoken of or left in shadows and whispers so we've never really seen like all 13 together in one matched aesthetic. So I'm really curious how they're going to handle this. We know from a previous leaked listing that we're getting Vector Prime sometime this year as part of Legacy United. So that's the start of it. But here's where everything kicks off. There is a Voyager class Prima on the way and Considering he's the first Matrix bearer and like the first leader of the Transformer race, kind of shocking we've never really had a Prima in any like real, you know, with any like full depiction. So I'm really curious how they're going to design that. In the Deluxe class, we have Micronus. Now, here's where I'm kind of suspecting. Because these characters do tend to take turns in fiction, there are better known depictions of them than, you know, uh, you know, than elsewhere. So what I'm expecting is something here. Hang on, I'll bang, back up to Prima for a second. I'm expecting something in this like grand hyper detailed aesthetic, but is also blended into their most well-known depiction. So they both hit the nostalgia point as well as be this like matched set of like higher being transformers which also leads you to wonder what exactly they're going to transform into when they technically don't really have transformations shown almost ever so there's a lot of play here they could literally be anything but along with this we have a deluxe soulless prime we've heard a lot about her uh she's the basis for uh the caimans in uh idw uh you know in the you know the torch bearers and all of that uh, we did get uh, some. Uh, we did get some of her in the Machinima series. Um, yeah, so she has some prominence. Like, like there's some importance to Solus. So, not shocked that she would make appearance here. Um, we also have uh, Alchemist Prime is in the listings. We know him. 
uh, is McAdam from, you know, uh, Robots in Disguise 2015. Again, I'd expect something similar to this depiction, but still with that more grandiose design stylings. Um, at the leader class prime price point, we have Onyx Prime. This one has me kind of excited. This one has me kind of excited. So it's leader class, which has me believing it's going to be this design you see in front of you from IDW 1.0, the Centaur. And there are multiple times he's depicted like this because all the primes kind of represent different facets of Transformer. You know, there is, there is a, you know, there is a, you know, like Prima represents the Matrix Bearers. You know, uh, Micronus represents Micromasters, Minicons, etc. You know, Solus is the first female Transformer. Um, you know, you have things like uh, Amalgamous Prime that is the first combiner. Hello, editing TJ here. I managed to confuse Amalgamous Prime with Nexus Prime because Amalgamous sounds like something of a combiner, whereas Nexus Prime has other things it sounds like, which are much more unfortunate. If you know, you know. You know, and here Onyx Prime is the first beast. So he is the he is basically the Transformers demigod of the beasts. So to keep that more animalistic robot mode, like the winged centaur look, I love that. That's gonna be such a unique figure if they actually go this route. And then what do you do with this transformation? Now you're going into crazy realms of what this could be. Oh, it could be so cool. Oh, this could be so this could be the flavor I'm missing, the like the newness in Transformers I haven't gotten in a long time. Uh, we're obviously continuing this like random pluck from a little bit of everything nostalgia next year that we've been having in you know the last few years. Uh, so more of the same that we've had basically since Siege, but mixing in something that's guaranteed to have this different aesthetic to it, I think is really what this uh, what the Generations line is needed. I'm excited for this one. We also have the Voyager class and Alpha Trion listed. Now, I actually didn't think they did a bad job with the last Alpha Trion toy, the, Scour the, the Scourge remold. I think hit the nail. Like, I thought that was... I don't... Like, Alpha Trion is important fictionally, but he's not very present in, like, G1. Uh, you know, he's more, you know, he's again, more or less like ancient, you know, like ancient legendary character. So I never expected him to get more than just retools. And the one time they did a brand new mold for him, it was this really weird, uh, you know, broadside pre-tool type thing with a lion mode out of nowhere, uh, like vaguely, like based on his unreleased beast machines design for Botcon. It was a weird toy. I like that toy more than a lot of people do, but it was a weird toy. This one feels like it's going to be just straight up Alpha Trion, just designed from the ground up to be Alpha Trion. And then if it gets retooled after that, good luck. You know, um, but it, feel, it feels right for Alpha Trion to finally get just a straight up figure that's all his own. And then wrapping up and probably the most exciting one on this entire list, we have a Fallen. And the thing about this one is it's not a package refresh. So we know it's not the studio series one from Revenge of the Fallen. It is absolutely, you know, is by all likelihood the original depiction of the Fallen, like the, 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 the walking, uh, cast iron oven, right? <laughs> like, like this is the one time where I'm like, yeah, put flame effects on your transformer. Put me some flame effects on a Transformer. Uh, I'm good with them here. But I love the original Fallen design. It pains me that the titanium is the only thing that we ever got of that design. And even that's not terribly accurate. So if they're going to give it another go and it's going to be a leader class. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And that's going to be it. That's our Generations 2025 line. So. It's an it's a really ambitious line because we're getting another like all all together combiner class figure. We're getting a little bit more animated, a little bit of R.I.D. and rescue bots, and then the primes. We're apparently getting a full set of primes now. That's going to be really cool. I can't help but notice a few things absent here. 
we are still missing Beast Wars characters. You know, we're getting a Silverbolt soon, but we still have no sign of a Quick Strike, which would kind of complete the non-trans metal cast of the show. We also know they're willing to do trans metal too, so where's my Cheetor? Where's my Dinobot? Um, you know, and then of course they still haven't figured out trans metals apparently. So the Beast Wars set is completely cut off now. And even with Armada, even though they are like heading even though they are leading off from like probably the best commander class toy they did with Armada Optimus, they don't seem to be carrying forward with it with Armada outside of Red Alert, because there's a lot of designs there that deserve another go. Granted, this isn't the entirety of the 2025 line. There's sure to be others filling the spaces, but that's what we know of for now. So fingers crossed that some of these other like little missing things pop up. And uh, keep in mind, there's no commanders listed. So outside of Silverbolt, we really don't know what they're going to do in that direction just yet. Um, that, and that's really just a guess, if anything. So um, guess what? Probably why they didn't do... R.I.D. Optimus and Magnus as uh, commanders. The spot's kind of taken. But that seems to be the direction. It's an interesting year we have to look forward to. So feel free to speculate in the comments below. As always, um, we will have to sit and wait for a long time before we find out anything about this. That's hopefully the end of the leaks for the week. But thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.